I'm going to do my microphone test. Can you hear me? Excellent. Um, well, I don't, also, you've been sitting for a long time. If you need to stand up and stretch your legs for the next 10 minutes, I, I really don't mind. And for those of you who are joining over the world, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, Susan, the conversation you had with Anton, I just thought was so insightful. And Anton was insightful, but you allowed him to be insightful. So thank you very much for that. It was so enjoyable. Rumin and Hakim, I just learned such a lot. I think what a privilege to listen um, to both of those women. And I don't know about you, but you know, having spent 18, 20 months on Zoom and Teams, this went much better than a lot of those meetings do. So Alan, you great effort there, and uh, sorry that we, we didn't get some of the questions. Also, this is my second COP event today in the University of Glasgow. My first one was with another global initiative, the 30% Club, which is about, uh, we were discussing the role of gender and climate change. I think the gender balance tonight was absolutely spot on. So I do applaud uh, Jeffy uh, 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 for that and for flying that flag. Um, Rumina talks a lot about action and not words. And so what I wanted to do was maybe just give us some hope with, with what a financial institution can do. This is about all of us acting individually and this kind of triple helix effect of you know, businesses, of society, of governments and the public sector coming together, not just in our small actions, but actually um, organizations with influence in the economy can do quite a lot. So I just wanted to expose some of that to you uh, this evening. NatWest, which is a, a major UK bank, still with footprint around the world, but um, we took a decision as a board, and Alison Rose, our chief executive, to be the main finance sponsor for COP. And that wasn't some part of some kind of rebranding or you know, trying to, to you know, get, get a, a, a big tick in the green box. It was because it just aligned so well with the purpose that we've been working on for um, the last three years. And for us, being that principal sponsor you know, really allowed us to, to build much more powerful um, partnerships uh, to help us tackle climate change, but actually uh, this kind of um, opportunity we have to allow our customers to affect climate change and, and affect their, their part in that, and I'll come to some of that later. It allowed us to engage with our colleagues in a new and exciting and different way, and we know that this really matters to talent, so it allowed us to do that. It allows us to play a leading role in this global issue. It allows us to very practically help our customers and it allowed us to kind of mobilize other players using that influence in the global financial services sector. And those four things are, are responsibilities that we take really, really seriously and that the board has been exceptionally involved in. And so for us, you know, on the finance side, um, we set a new target just last month to provide, we've heard 100 billion talked about a few times tonight, but we have set a target to provide 100 billion pounds on climate and sustainable funding and financing to customers by the end of 25. And that's because we all set an initial target of 20 billion and just blew through of that ceiling. And we're playing a leading role, we've also heard about this earlier tonight, through the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero to mobilize the private sector. We really want to help our customers. Transition has been a key word for me throughout this and, and how we help our customers uh, transition as fast as possible to net zero by uh, green mortgages, by helping businesses measure and mitigate their carbon footprint. We bank one in four businesses in the UK. So again, we talked about opportunity earlier on and there's just a massive opportunity in this. Last week at a COP Fringe event, we have something called the Scottish Edge in Scotland, and it awards cash to um, innovative young businesses. And we had an event last week which was entirely around climate, and you know, our bank put up the money um, for that. Um, the recent Springboard to Sustainable Recovery report was also sponsored by us as a bank. Now, I go back to the eternal optimist in me and this notion of opportunity. You may not know, and it's very similar throughout the world, certainly my time at the World Bank, a lot of reliance on micro-enterprises, but the UK economy is actually an SME economy. Yes, there are lots of big organisations, but it's an SME economy. Um, and you know, we identified that half of the kind of responsibility for businesses accounting for what we need to do in climate change is actually going to have to come from SMEs. If they do that, there's 160 billion revenue, 130,000 jobs for SMEs as a result. Um, and there is an opportunity there because we also find 
that only 10% of SMEs actually see a growth opportunity in tackling climate change. That's worrying, but it tells me there's 90% of opportunity. So what can banks, what can government, what can other agencies do to help SMEs who often just don't know where to start to unlock this? With our colleagues, we've been live streaming daily events. Uh, we've partnered with lots of uh, carbon um, teaching tools. Um, and you know, we've really, really made this uh, come alive for our workforce. I'm the lead non-executive director for the workforce at the bank. And actually, we have a, a colleague advisory panel that represents the tens and tens and thousands of colleagues. And we're going to do that um, with a COP theme uh, on, on, on Thursday. We also have achieved you know, net zero in our own operations because getting our own house in order is really important. We intend to be climate positive, not neutral, but climate positive by 2025. And I think this is a really important point for, for business. We have our executive remuneration absolutely linked to those targets. So that certainly focuses uh, the mind. We really want to accelerate the speed of transition because you know, speed really matters here too. So we are the first bank to introduce a carbon tracking feature in mobile banking. I was on a panel tonight and someone said, I just wish there was a way to track in your mobile bank. I'm not here to sell you an app or to sell you a bank account, but we are doing that now. We launched that last week with a New Zealand fintech um, and you know, called um, Kogo. And actually for every transaction, you can actually see what the carbon uh, um, kind of footprint is there and then think about your own purchasing decisions differently. A very practical step for you know, citizens being able to take this into their own hands. We've launched a, a, a partnership with Octopus Energy to make EV vehicle ownership much easier for our colleagues and for all our business customers. And again, I think there's just a lot we can do here. We have these accelerators for um, young businesses throughout the UK and 25% of the spaces are reserved for um, climate focused businesses. I think um, I talked to you about this target that we had for the 100 uh, billion and also in 2020 we reduced our, we've heard a lot about carbon and uh, fossil fuels uh, tonight, uh, we reduced our oil and gas exposure to 15.8% um, to 4.1 billion, now that's only 0.8% of our exposure, so still some way to go but actually we've been decreasing it as uh, you know in terms of our um, own exposure. Building partnerships is key. I'm going to finish tonight by talking about the fact that you know, this is a team sport. No part of the, this triple helix can, can do it on their own. And so um, I was at an event last week which we, we partnered with British Gas, with Worcester Boilers, and actually the opportunity around um, carbon reduction in homes and making homes, and actually very important for me, shelter is part of that because it's back to this climate justice and the poverty around this as well in terms of uh, homeless people. Um, so I think that's another you know, example. I think my personal reflections, and I've, I've, I've just skipped to the, the chase given our, our time tonight, Alan. Um, my personal reflections of, of, of this, um, I really, really agree with Anton. There is no choice other than to be an optimist because if we're not, um, you know, then we really are doomed. It's, you know, it's, it's just no other choice for me. But if ever there was a team sport, it is definitely this. It really was a privilege for me to be involved in economic development all over the world in my own country and then working with developing countries in around 60 countries at the World Bank, actually creating that private sector development opportunity. And even in the gender event I was at, we talked about investable propositions, how we can move these flows of capital uh, to the south uh, for this just transition. And I remember working at the World Bank when a lot of developing countries were leapfrogging into the digital age and actually don't have to go through all that pain over the industrial revolution. And I think it's a really important point if we can mobilize that technological know-how and that capital to help these, you know, these countries, um, these, these brothers and sisters of ours, these citizens leapfrog. And there's a test bed for how to do this right. Um, and then I think that would be just fantastic um, to see. I really think this is about 
international economic development and focusing on the opportunities of that. We can see the investment flows of migration there. It is about the private sector. It's about the international financial institutions. It's not forgetting how daunting the world is for SMEs and micro businesses anyway. So how can we help them um, get there? And yes, it is about the multilateral agencies, but actually no one institution or person has the answer uh, to this. And so that for me is the thing that's come out of the whole week. And I suppose the, the kind of pinnacle of all my life so far in terms of those experiences, seeing um, the power of that. I do feel it will be ultimately private finance that delivers what has to be done. I think governments can set policies, they can set frameworks, they can make targets. But for me, this is really about the role of um, private um, finance um, in all of this. Um, it's amazing to be part of an organization for me, um, which has our, playing our part in those climate targets and making the world a more sustainable place it's really important to me to be part of that. If you think of the institution this was in 2006 and the institution it is now, if you'd said to me in 2006 I'd serve on the board, I'd have said I'm not going near a bank. Uh, you know, I, I'm just not, not doing that. But actually to be part of that and the diversity that people like me can bring to that is really important. Um, my World Bank life and the privilege of that and the most transformative part of my life and you know, what I learned and what I learned about how we waste so much in this north and you know we take so much for granted uh, will always stay with me and you know that idea for me of a just transition and equity is really has to be at the heart of this and surely there is an opportunity for all of us to just be greater than the sum of our parts we've been quoting adam smith left right and center tonight which is fitting but that for me would be the epitome of a win-win um Anton referred to Adam Smith talking about the importance of specialization and as a kind of amateur economist but professional economic developer, that's really important. Michael Porter talked about it as co-opetition. And given that this is a team sport and you know we all want our own nations to do well, but I think if we had a bit of co-opetition and not competition in our heads, then surely that would serve as well. So thank you very much for inviting me this evening and we are absolutely delighted to be part of it.